Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, church. Welcome to our online worship service for today, Valentine's Day, Sunday, February 14th, 2021. Before we get started with this uh, worship this morning, we do have a few announcements. Uh, the first one is that today, Sunday, February 14th, we were supposed to prepack at the food center, but that has been canceled. So we are not prepacking at the food center on Sunday, February 14th. Also, February 15th is President's Day and the office will be closed. So if you need anything, just contact Matthew or myself and uh, we will surely get back to you. Also, February 17th, our Ash Wednesday breakfast will be taking place here at the, in the Fellowship Hall at 6.50 a.m. Uh, we will have a message as well as an amazing breakfast put together by the men of the church. Also on February 17th, we will have our Ash Wednesday service at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We hope that we can see you and we hope that you come and worship with us on Ash Wednesday. Back to our morning worship. Please join me in the call to worship. We have gathered today to give our love, faith, and hope in the Lord. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing, and you have clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Let us worship God. Please join me for our litany of confession. Merciful God, hear our confession as we pray in Christ's name. We claim to be faithful, but we obey not your commandments. We boast of hope, yet we dwell not in faith. We continue to judge and purposely hurt others. Forgive us in our transgressions. Help us to hear your good words.
Now let us affirm what we believe as Christians by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word. <clears throat> Give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. PC Youth and Congregation, it is me, Mr. Toby, standing in Fellowship Hall. Today, we are talking about day six. And day six is so big that we have to break it up into two parts. Today, part one. If you remember last week, we talked about God creating the birds in the sky, as well as the sea animals. Well, today in part one of day six, we are gonna talk about land animals. Let's go! Genesis chapter one, verses 24 and 25 say, Then God commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small, and it was done. So God made them all, and he was pleased with what he saw. So what we can learn from today's scripture is that God created tons of different animals, right? He created animals that we can have in our homes or on the farm, like dogs, cats, chickens, goats, snakes, all that stuff. But he also created wild animals, wild animals that are on the safari, in the plains, that they, they stay in the jungle. They don't belong in our houses. But... We can learn from all of these animals. We can learn how much God loves these animals because he created them. So, what can we learn? The simple fact that God loves animals. So we should also love animals. Next week, we're talking about human beings. And all God's children said, Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. The mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A, a fire devours before him. And around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness for he is a God of justice.
Our New Testament scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. This is the Lord, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I've lived in my house for almost nine years now. I love my house. A member of this church, Dick McDaniel, had shown my wife and I multiple places. We exhausted a lot of options until we finally found the house that we were looking for. Well, over the years, the north side of my house along with north sides of many homes, they end up developing this green, mossy, moldy stuff on the side. And our house was no different. But I didn't have anything but elbow grease to try and get it cleaned off. And every day I looked at it, and every day I wanted to clean it. I wanted to make it shine really nice. So one day as I was talking to my neighbor, he told me that he would let me borrow his power washer. I immediately got so excited knowing that my house was going to shine like I'd never seen it before. It was going to be clean once again. So my neighbor wheeled his power washer over, showed me how to use it, and I was soon off to the races. And let me tell you, the satisfaction that I was getting as I was stripping off those moss strips on the side of my house was amazing. The satisfaction was so intense that I just ended up power washing my entire house. What I didn't realize was how dirty my house had become over nine years. You see, I only thought I had to wash one side, but when I started going to the other spots, I realized that I was peeling off a lot of dirt. My power washing didn't stop there though. I was so excited to use this thing. I went ahead and power washed my sidewalk and I even power washed my driveway for a little bit. And I even flirted with power washing my teenage sons. But all jokes aside, I noticed how much I had let things go. I noticed how much without proper care, things can get dirty and nasty. I noticed that without constant attention, things can get messed up. But this just isn't relatable to our home life. This also relates very well to the scriptures for today, as well as our upcoming Lenten season. Oftentimes in life, Christians go through spurts of good faith or keeping Christ at the forefront. However, we also have long bouts of inattentiveness, laziness, and also just not paying attention when it comes to God. And this week I found out that since today is Transfiguration Sunday, Transfiguration Sunday always falls on the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, or the first day of Lent. It is interesting in that we hear a story in the Gospels about when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a mountain, transformed himself, shown as bright as anyone had ever seen, and gave these men a glimpse of, into what the kingdom of God looked like. All the while, seeing figures of Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus, as well as God surrounding all of them with a, in a cloud and telling them that Jesus is his son and that they were to listen to him. The disciples were shown for a little bit the manifestation of God right before their eyes. They were given a sneak peek of what the kingdom was and what Jesus could do. It gave the disciples confirmation 
that everything that Jesus had been saying and everything that he was saying about himself was the truth. So you might ask yourself what the purpose of this passage is right before the Lenten season. You see, we have to think about what the main objective for Lent is. Our main objective for Lent is to refocus and recenter our lives to Christ, to trust that Christ is and should be our main focal point. Our main objective is to do things that allow for more focus on God or to let go of things that might take us away from God. Lent is also a time to remind ourselves about what Jesus did for us on the cross. The reasons we do this is because our minds are clouded with some of the craziest stuff that we're never proud of. We keep drama, judgments, hate, gossip, and many other hurtful things in our minds. And these thoughts don't allow us to see clearly. These thoughts cloud us up. These thoughts make us dirty. These thoughts don't allow us to see how Jesus shines brightly for all of us, like he shined brightly for Peter, James, and John on top of that mountain. Peter, James, and John saw the proof. When Jesus changed and shined for them, their spiritual visibility was clear. It was easy to see. It was beautiful. It scared them, but they did see it. When Jesus changed in front of the disciples, although they were scared, Peter wanted to set up tents for shelter for Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. Peter didn't want what was happening to end. The scholar Albert Barnes says in his commentary on this scripture, that they were frightened, amazed, and rejoiced. And in the ecstasy of the moment, they proposed to remain there. Peter, James, and John wanted to keep what they were seeing. They didn't want it to end. I want this spiritual visibility that they experienced so badly. However, my human mind will cloud this. My human mind wants what it wants, and I am no stranger of succumbing to that thought. But what if we can reach the point of spiritual visibility? What if we can reach the point of clarity? What if we can discipline ourselves to see clearly of the spiritual wellness that Christ can bring. This is what Lent is all about. Building a new habit of reaching spiritual brightness or spiritual visibility that we can achieve only through God. Now you might be asking yourself, Toby, what did the house cleaning thing have to do with any of this? My answer is simple. What do you do? when you clean something up really nice for the first time in a long time? What do you do when you cleaned your room as a kid? What do you do when you finish a project in perfect time and it's successful? You're proud of it. You keep looking at it. When I was a kid, when I cleaned my room, I would just stand in the doorway and just stare at my room and be like, wow, look what I did. I want to keep it this way. When I cleaned my house, I must have went outside 10 times and just stared at my walls and how beautiful they looked and how brightly they shone. When these accomplishments happen, we tell ourselves that we want to keep it this way. And this is what Lent can do for us. God can shine through us to help us do exactly that. We need to prepare ourselves to be able to see the bright shining light that is Jesus Christ. And humanity during these 40 days 
needs to work on cleaning ourselves out. We have to come to Christ and repent on the things that we should not be doing. We have to come to Christ to let him know that you, God, is who I need to help clean my soul. We need to prepare ourselves during this 40-day period to be able to have a clear spiritual visibility. At the end of that 40 days is Easter Sunday, the day that we will all remember the shining light of the resurrected Christ. The day that Christ kept his promise and came back to us. And soon enough, Jesus will return. And we must be ready to be able to accept that light back into our lives. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is our bright, shining light. Jesus Christ is who we should spend time gazing at. And during this Lenten season, we work to make that happen. We do things or take on things that give us more discipline in order to focus on him. As human beings, when we achieve that clean soul because of Christ, we are more likely to spend our time gazing upon him in love and affection. The Lenten objective is simple. And it is to gaze on the bright light of Christ with love and affection, knowing that through God and God only, we can be better Christians. It is time to power wash the soul. Amen. Church, our gifts are not just worship. They are a participation in Christ's mission. Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Giving is one of the most powerful ways we can find our heart to something. So let's take the time to offer up our offerings to God.
Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, please accept these gifts that we have given to you. Lord, you give us so many blessed gifts that we are unable to express a proper thank you. Please turn these gifts that we give to you into blessings for everyone. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you this day to ask for prayers for anyone who is in need of hearing your voice speak to them. We ask for prayers for our friends, our neighbors, our families. We ask for prayers for people that are grieving family members. Lord, we ask that you wrap your loving arms around them to show them that your love is boundless. We ask for prayers for the sick, for our brothers and sisters who are struggling all around. We want them to feel peace, Lord, and they can only receive that through you. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to be better in faith for you. Help us to come to you easier than we normally do. Lord, we ask these things through the way that your Son taught us to pray. In our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So church, this week is the start of Lent. Let us go out and refocus our hearts and our minds to Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.